What's up, what's up, live family? How you doing? Hope you're doing well. I got a few things going on today, uh, but it's on track to be a highly productive day. What I want to do is really have a live conversation with you guys. So let me load up the chat here on my other screen. If you're not watching this live, be sure that you're subscribed and you have post notifications cut on. So maybe next time when we're live, you can join in with us. As always, if you have questions, ask questions. That's the reason why we do these sorts of things live. And what I want to talk about today is only for those of you out there that have never had a five-figure day, you've never made $10,000 or more in a single day before, and you have the desire to, right? Because it's one thing to say you never made it and you don't care about it, but only those of you out there that have a desire to make it. I don't imagine a whole lot of people will tune in just because it's kind of a odd time that I'm doing this stream. So I want you to know that if you were here for the stream, it was just meant for you to be here and to get your question answered live on this Saturday, a uh, pretty early afternoon. So as always, I believe anything that somebody truly understands, they should be able to simplify in a very simple way. So my goal here is to simplify this in a way that each and every one of you all can replicate it as well. What's up? What's up? Everybody in the chat, I see you. What's up? What's up? Everybody that's live. If you have questions, ask questions. Let me know where you're watching this from. Um, so let's get straight into the to the steps. All right, you guys know we had to ease into it so YouTube can send out notifications. But um, everybody that's late will catch the replay. So let's start off with business being, in my opinion, the best way to have a five-figure day. Now, can you have a five-figure day trading or investing in the markets? Absolutely. I'm sure you've heard people say it, maybe even seen it firsthand yourself. Can you have a five-figure day in real estate? Yes, you absolutely can. There are people that have five-figure days monthly in real estate off of their rental portfolio. Now, if you are somebody that is, you know, skilled and knowledgeable in real estate or in investing in the stock market, by all means, take action uh, in those areas. But if you are somebody that is not highly skilled as a real estate or as an investor in any market, whether that's crypto, stocks, Forex, you name it, I believe that the best way for the average person to have a five-figure day or better is by starting a business, right? That is the first baseline that I want to establish, all right? And any questions you have, I don't want anybody that's here live to leave this live stream without knowing how they can go implement this uh, literally within the next 30 days or less, right? And I say or less because I don't know what stage of business that you're in right now, right? Um, now that we've agreed, or hopefully we now all agree that business is the easiest way to have a five-figure or greater day, um, let's talk about the three most common ways businesses make money. If your business is unable to make money, these three most common ways, I consider it a hard business. Now, can money be made in a hard business? Yes. People make money in hard businesses all of the time. But if you can make money with an easy business by these three uh, milestones, if you will, why not do so? So the first way that I check to see if a business can make money when I'm determining if it's going to be hard or easy for me to make money in that business is can I make money doing the thing, whatever that thing is, whether it's being an independent courier an author, a YouTuber, a real estate investor, uh, whatever it is, right? So can you make money doing the thing? That's one common way, right? Secondly, I also want to see, can I make money selling the blueprint of doing the thing? Now, in society today, a lot of people don't understand why would you sell the blueprint of something if you're making great money with it? There's even people that are naive enough to believe that if you could really make X amount of money doing something, you wouldn't tell other people how to do it. Why not? Very few men and women will ever build a nationwide company, will ever build a worldwide company. Very few are going to even build a region-wide company. Right. When I was an independent courier, I built a region wide business. Right. Most business owners don't think of their business in terms of regions, uh, countries, 
uh, nationwide, worldwide, whatever, all right? Uh, the reason why I say that is if you only plan on making money in and around your immediate area, why do you care if somebody on the other side of the country or on the other side of the world do what you do? With the power of the internet and as big as the market is, uh, assuming that you pick a viable market, you can't serve everybody in the market anyway. Chick-fil-A can't serve everybody that wants chicken, chicken. McDonald's can't serve everybody that wants a hamburger or a hamburger. Nike can't serve everybody that wants tennis shoes, a pair of shoes, right? So there will be big players in the market and they will take for themselves a share of the market. However, I want you to know that there's going to always be room for good business, right? Always be good for viable businesses. And I want you all to understand that selling the blueprint of how you do what you do does not hurt you. It only helps you. Last but not least is, uh, is there any way that we could do a franchise model is what I call it. Now this could be some sort of done for you business, uh, or it could just be selling leads. Um, I know a lot of entrepreneurs, for example, they have service-based businesses. They might have certain customers that they already know are not their ideal customers, maybe because of the price point that they're willing to pay, maybe because the nature of the problem that they have isn't the area in which that they specialize. So they will sell those leads to other businesses that specialize in areas they don't specialize in or uh, is willing to do business with a different sort of clientele. Right. If you're a small business, something that you will learn early on is that you can't afford to be the cheapest in the market. So you may have to charge more than some of these big companies that have the ability to buy stuff in bulk or, you know, finagle their business in a way where their costs aren't the same as yours uh, to provide each individual service. Just because we all know the power of money, relationships and et cetera when it comes to big business. All right. So those are the three ways. Does everybody understand that? The, whatever business you choose, make sure you can make money doing the business, make money, make sure that you can make money teaching other people how to do what it is that you do. And also make sure that you can make money either by selling leads or creating some sort of done for you or franchise model of the business. I just want to make sure that everybody follows along. Like I said, I want this to be something that if you're serious, not curious, you can watch this single YouTube video and go execute on, right? Appreciate that in the chat. Somebody says 10K in a month, maybe. Absolutely, right? You can you can have five-figure months, but, but what I want to get you to is that I want to show you how you can have a 10K day. Now, if 10K is your goal and you can make 10K working one day out of the month, you can take the rest of the month off. So for many people, that will be life-changing as well. But you guys, let me know. Does that make sense before we move forward? If it doesn't, ask your questions in the chat. Ask your questions in the chat, right? When you're deciding what business you're going to do, make sure you can make money by doing the business. That's obvious. But can you sell that blueprint to somebody else in the form of a book, a course, any sort of training to help other people that want to know how to do what it is that you do. And then can you make money off of uh, some sort of franchise model, right? If you guys need an example, uh, I could go into an example real quick, but let me know where you guys are at with it uh, first and foremost, right? So you guys know right now we're, we're um on the home stretch of launching Seek e Gaming. All right. So, Seek e Gaming is uh my newest venture, so I got my Call Heart jacket uh branded with it. So my um my gaming company, right? So I can actually make money selling board games and card games. I can also make money by teaching other people how do you make and sell board games and card games, and I can also provide a service where somebody can say, "Hey, JT." I want to know, or I don't even want to know, right? I just want a card game. Can you help me get it done? I want a board game. Can you just help me get it done? I'm so busy doing what it is that I do that I don't even really have time to learn how to do it and execute it myself, right? Same thing can be said about any other venture that, that I am taking on or that I've recently taken on, 
right? Let's break down this a little bit deeper, then I'm going to move forward. I'm going to do like how we said in the military. I'm going to take your silence as consent, all right? Because nobody is saying uh, any questions, uh, which is fine. You you probably understand what I'm saying, but I'm just letting you know I'm not. Uh, I don't know if you don't know, right? Uh, so you, you got to say something. So uh, let's say, for example, for easy math, I always use the T-shirt business, not picking on those of you all that are in the T-shirt business, but that's just a common example that always come to mind. Let's say that I can actually design a T-shirt and sell it to you uh, with whatever brand I created on it for $20, right? And you might come and buy a shirt if you like the brand, the whatever is on it, and you might give me $20 for the shirt. Well, what if I say, well, instead of selling you a shirt, what if I teach you how to create your own brand and sell your own shirts for $200, right? So now I've been, I'm able to 10X the value of my IP. I'm able to 10X the value of my intellectual property, right? Which is the manifestation of my thoughts into the real world. So not just me executing on it myself and getting a result, I can now help you execute on it and get a result as well. So if you just want to buy the shirt, wear the shirt and leave, that's $20. If you want to learn how to start your own business so you can make and sell your own shirts for $20, maybe that's a $200 program, right? And then let's say you want a done for you model and you say, hey, JT, I don't want to buy your $20 shirt. I don't even want to go through your $200 program and learn how to make my own brand and sell my own shirts. Um, I just want, you know, a franchise model of it, right? Or maybe you make the shirts and I'll sell the shirts, right? Whatever makes sense. But let's say at that highest level, that's a $2,000 offer, all right? So the $2,000 offer, we're now your manufacturer. So you don't have to know how to build a brand and everything that goes into actually uh, pressing up or embroidering or however you want to make your shirts, right? All you focus on is making money by being the business owner, being the face, being the marketer, and we supply you the shirts. For Easy Mav, let's say that we're going to supply you the shirts at $5 a piece, wholesale price, uh, but you got to buy minimum order quantity of $2,000 worth of shirts, right? The, the reason why I'm breaking this down is because I want you to see it's the same piece of intellectual property, right? the same piece of intellectual property. So I can take the knowledge in my head of how to create a t-shirt brand and I can sell you a $20 shirt. I can teach you how to make your own brand and sell your own shirt and charge you $200. Or I can figure out what kind of done for you offer, what kind of way I can give you a speedy outcome of helping you get your brand up and running and making money. But let's say I charge $2,000 for that. It is the same intellectual property, right? Lots of times business owners in my arena, in my sphere, when I talk to them about having five-figure days, they, they never really thought about it. So yes, they're like, well, I know what to do to make this product and sell it and make $20. Well, why don't you show somebody else how to how to make a product and sell it for twenty dollars, right? And charge them two hundred dollars because they got a skill that they can use to make an infinite number of twenty dollars, right? Why not do it for them and charge them two thousand dollars, right? And and of course we know that the the prices may vary, so don't get stuck on the exact dollar amount because some people may say I'm gonna charge a hundred dollars for my shirt, I must charge a thousand dollars to teach you how to start your own brand and sell your own shirts, and I'm going to charge you $10,000 if I'm going to do the done-for-you model. So we're, we're not getting stuck up uh, on the uh, numbers. We're understanding the model, right? Uh, the reason why I want you to understand uh, that you can monetize that same IP three different ways is because I have a question for you. How will you make your money? How will you make your money? This is, now we're getting into the tangible five steps that you can execute on to have a five-figure day. Are you going to make your money doing the thing? So selling the $20 shirt, the $200 shirt, the whatever your product, service, or information is, are you going to make your money selling the thing, selling the blueprint for the thing, or doing a done-for-you or lead generation version of the thing? 
you now know which one pays the most money. But just because something pays the most money doesn't mean that that's the way that you would like to go about doing it, right? If my goal is simply to have a $10,000 day, I will simply focus on uh, the higher levels up there. So either selling the blueprint or selling a done for you version of it. All right. Let me make sure I ain't lost nobody in the chat. Like I said, I'm taking your silence as consent. I see Dallas, Texas in the house. Shout out to Dallas, Texas. I see London in the building. Shout out to London. All right. Boom, boom, boom. All right. See some people that said they had some 10K weeks, had some 10K months, right? Um, Never made a 10K day, right? Ha has everybody here seen my 100K in a day award? So me and a business partner of mine, uh, we do six figures pretty much every single month together. Um, I don't own the business outright. So that's what I'm telling you. I got a business partner. I actually have multiple business partners because I have different businesses that I, that I partner uh, in on. But um, just just to qualify myself for the people that um, don't know, right? So has JT ever made any money or is he just talking out of the side of his neck? So March of last year, right? Uh, March of last year, the date is on the award. If, if it's really that important, I can run and go grab it out of the other room. You guys let me know. Uh, but we received an award for making six figures in a day. And my mentors have seven figure days. One of my mentors, I saw her make $198,000 this month in a single day. All right. All right. Boom, 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 boom. So I want you all to know, like, not only am I just telling you guys how to do it, I've done it, will continue to do it, and my mentors do it on the highest level, right? My my highest mentors have seven-figure days, and it's the same strategy with different numbers. It's the same strategy with different numbers. I'm using numbers like 20, 200, and 2,000 because I feel like that's more palatable Right. If I use big numbers, people won't even remember or listen for the blueprint. They'll just say, who in the world will give you two thousand? Who in the world will give you twenty thousand? Right. L let's let's keep the first things first. Let's understand the blueprint and then we can figure that out. Right. There are plenty of people. Hear me clearly. I'm talking to you watching and listening to this video. There are plenty of people that will happily give you. $20,000 or more in a single transaction if you are willing to offer them something that they desire and you know how to offer it to them in a way that they understand. Now, I'm not saying that that's your mom or best friend or cousin will. I'm saying that as an entrepreneur that has seen a whole lot of markets, right, and participate in several of them, there are people out there that they don't care if you're black or white. They don't care if you're male or female. They don't care what your socioeconomic background is. If you can solve their problem, they will pay you anything they can afford. Right? I am somebody that pays five figures uh, for certain mentorships, right? And other things that I need, not just mentorships, but that's that's just on my mind right now. So question number one, getting back to the point, how will you make your money? Somebody tell me in the chat, how will you make your money? Are you going to make your money selling your thing? Are you going to make your money selling the blueprint to others so that way they can do what you do, right? Because remember, we operate in an abundance mindset, not a scarcity mindset. I don't care how many of you all sell what I sell, know what I know, right? I believe that there is plenty money out there for you to make all the money that you want to make in life. And there still be enough left over for me to make all the money I want to make as well. So it doesn't matter to me if you do what I do, do what somebody else does or do your own thing. Right. I truly have an abundance mindset. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Let me see where we at. How do you decide customer pain points? Right. So so we target the customer pain points that they tell us they have. Right. So you can do polls, you can do surveys, you can see what the market is already providing for that audience of people, right? So there's several different ways to do it, but you should be selling a solution to a problem that already exists, not trying to create a problem and then trying to sell a solution for it. And 
you should be selling to people that deem this problem worthy of being solved with their money. Not everybody is like that. Certain people, when they grass grow up high, they crank up the line more or go buy a line more and they cut the grass. When my grass gets up high, I contact my landscaper. He comes and cuts all of my property, right? So you need to target the type of people that when they view this problem, they say, you know what? My time is more valuable than my money. So I'm willing to solve this with money, not my time. I can make that money back. I can never get that time back. So therefore, I will solve this problem with my money because my time is more valuable. All right? All right. Houston, Texas in the building. All right. What's up? What's up, everybody here? Virginia in here. All right. I think lag is what? La uh, Lagos? Lagos? How we pronounce it? All right. Um, boom, 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 boom. There's something on the screen. I'll have to wait for some more comments to come through because I don't know why YouTube would even put that on my screen. So if you have questions, keep typing them. Uh, I'll just need the, the chat to jump up some more and I'll get to any more questions that's in the chat because it, it just put a row of emojis at the bottom of my screen in the chat for some reason. So I can't really, uh, I can't really see what's left. All right. Secondly to that. So point number one, as you guys are typing or just listening is how will you make your money? Second to that is I want you all to think of this, right? So a lot of people make the mistake and say, Hey, if you can make $10,000, matter of fact, I'll do, I'll do the math live. with you. They'll say, okay, if if you can make ten thousand dollars in a day, JT, ten thousand, then you should do it three hundred and sixty five days out the year, and then you would make three million six hundred. You probably not gonna be able to read it. I'll just read it to you. Three million six hundred and fifty thousand. Why don't you do that? Right. Well, you could if you're a big enough business with a big enough marketing budget and you have a big enough value proposition. I will be honest with you. That's not realistic for most businesses. So let me tell you a better way to do it, right? I would venture to say that most everybody here could pay their bills with a little bit less than $3.6 million a year because you're probably doing it already, right? So scarcity and or savings should be leveraged. So when you hear people say that they had a five-figure, six-figure, seven-figure day, it's because that they market this event, which is going to be the next point that we're going to go deeper on. It could be an in-person or a virtual event, right? Every They get everybody in the room and then they say, hey, for a limited time only, you can get this value proposition at this price. Or for a limited time only, you can get this thing because once it's gone, it's gone. So in your business, I want you to ask yourself, how can you leverage scarcity Right. And how can you leverage savings in order to get people to make a concentrated purchase? Right. So you could make ten thousand dollars in a month. Right. If there's no incentive for anybody to give it to you in a day. All right. If Walmart said and of course, I don't think they ever will. But if Walmart said on the 16th of the month, everything in the store is going to be discounted to 50 cent above whatever we pay for it, right? Or 5% because they got some items that, that are cheap, right? So if Walmart said on the 16th of every month, we're going to sell everything in the store at only 5% above what we paid for it, right? Imagine how packed it would be. It would look like it was Black Friday or another one of those major holidays where the lines are, are from the front to the back and it's just packed in there, right? Why? Can you still go get those items, you know, tomorrow, next week, next month, et cetera? Yes, but because they emphasize, hey, there's, there's scarcity here, there's savings here, they're able to get people to concentrate and, and get an influx of cash in a small window of time. So one thing that I want you all to start doing is understanding Hey, if I want to have a five figure or better day, how can I leverage scarcity in my favor? 
and or savings. You don't always have to give a discount, but I, I think that it's worth mentioning as well. Right. Next thing that I have on my list is when you're talking about your value proposition, whatever your product, your service or your information is, I want you to start speaking if you're not doing so already in terms of a clear outcome, a core promise and a guarantee. Those are three things that any potential buyer needs to know from you, period. But especially when your goal is to have a five or six figure day. Right. Lead with, again, a clear outcome. Why should I buy your cell phone, Apple? Why should I buy your microphone? Sure. Why should I buy your whatever your thing is? Right. So clear outcome. Buying this gets me this result. Right. So crystal clear. I don't have to figure out what your thing is for or why I should buy it. Tell me, don't make me have to figure out what's the clear outcome I'm going to have if I buy your product, your service, or your information, right? After that, give me a core promise, right? The core promise is pretty much, uh, Apple is not the only person or only type of phone that I can go grab, right? So why should I go get an Apple phone over any other phone that's out there, right? So, so what is it about your brand? What is it about what you offer, right, that says, okay, yes, here's the clear outcome that I'm going to provide you, and here's why you should choose me. And then what I like to do, but not everybody does this, but this is a home run for me, if you're doing high ticket. Right. Let me preface it by saying this. If you're doing high ticket, this is usually going to make you way more money than not using it. Right. Give a guarantee. Give a guarantee. Right. Only if you're doing high ticket, I will say that. Right. I'll give you a real life example of it. Just, you know, so you guys can can better see it in your mind. You guys know that I have the five day program. It's a self-paced program for any business owner out there. If you have a business up and running, but you're not making $100,000 or more consistently every single year, I have a five-day self-paced program, right? When you join the program, you're going to get access to the program and you're going to get direct access to me personally, right? Not my assistants or my team members. You're going to get direct access to me, right? If you go through the program, implement all of the steps that the program tells you to implement, and you don't make $100,000 within 12 months or less of you enrolling in the program and doing all of the stuff, I'll give you a full money back guarantee, right? So if you, the, the program is like a thousand bucks, don't mind. If it's not for you, it's not for you, right? But just for illustration purposes, all right, and if you guys want to see it, it's linked down in the description below. So what is my clear promise, right? What is my clear outcome that I'm delivering to somebody, right? Clear outcome, then we're going to get into the core promise. But what is my clear outcome? Hey, if you take this program and do what it says, your business will go from sub 100K a year to 100K or greater every single year. That's the clear outcome, right? If your business does not want that or need that, then this isn't for you, right? Clear outcome. What's the core promise? Hey, I'm going to tell you exactly what to do and I'm going to give you access to me because if you start doing it and then life start lifing or you hit a hurdle or whatever the case may be, right? Boom, reach out to me. And I'll tell you, hey, you need to do this or this this is how I would do this if I was in your situation. Right. So that's my core promise. Hey, you're I'm going to give you the blueprint. But if you have trouble executing it, reach out to me directly. All right. And then what's the guarantee? If you do everything I tell you to do and you don't get this result in 12 months or less, I'll give you your money back. Right. So that gives the potential buyer a clear outcome, 
a core promise, and a guarantee. Now, in terms of your business, if you're doing lower ticket items, like I said, you can still have a guarantee, and sometimes I do. But what I will tell you is that, and I don't mean this in a negative way, we're just all family here. You know, I'm your favorite country cousin, JT, so we just keep it real. There are different tiers of people, right? So I'll use myself as an example, not to pick on anybody else. I paid $15,000 for a program last year. In my opinion, the program was not worth it. I'm not asking for a refund. I'm not leaving a bad review. I'm not on my social media saying, hey, this is a terrible this or that, right? Why? Because the amount of time and the amount of energy I am exerting to try to bash another business does not help my business in any way. So what benefit is it to me for me to go back and forth with a company, argue with them, beg for a refund, or go through whatever the rigmarole may be for me to air them out online, right? If I use that same time and energy and just working on the things in my business that work, I'll make way more than the $15,000 that I lost, right? Now, not everybody is me. Some people will say, hey, 15 grand, you got to come up off of that. And that's fine if that's you. But what I'm telling you, the point here is that the mindset of higher ticket buyers is different. So even if you've never been a higher ticket buyer, understand that higher ticket buyers, they value their time. So do I want to submit a refund request and then have to go through mediation? And then they're going to say, hey, well, you went through the entire program. How do we know that you not just trying to get our program for free and get your money back, right? That might take months of going back and forth, right? By the grace of God, we make way more money than that a month. So all of that to say, is that when you're dealing with higher ticket buyers, they're not going to be as big as uh, as big of a headache as a lot of lower ticket uh, clients, right? To be honest with you, my five day program is underpriced just because I want to get as many people in it, get as many wins as possible. And then once we have a whole bunch of wins, then the prices are going to go up, right? For that same reason, just so we're only dealing with the people that are most serious, right? So if if it was, let's say all I had was $40 and the program wasn't 15000 it was $15. Well, that was almost half my money. So if I spent 15 of my $40 and the program didn't deliver on the clear outcome, the core promise and the guarantee that it gave... I, I, hey man, listen, I need that back, right? I'm down to my last $25 now because of you. I had 40, I gave you 15, you didn't deliver, I need that 15 back. All I got is 40, right? And maybe that man or woman, not bashing them, but maybe that man or woman doesn't know how to go out and make 10, 20, 100 times or a thousand times more than that investment, right? So, hey, yeah, that is a different level of buyer. Nothing wrong with that person. So just being clear, I just want you to understand that there is a different clientele of people out there. Now, when you raise those prices, there are going to be a, a smaller pool of people. But still understand, when I say a smaller pool of people, it's not like there's one person on earth and you got to go through the desert to find them there's still a big enough pool of people that you can make millions of dollars a year. It's just not going to be uh, as many people as you would get interested if it was a dollar if you go to $20,000. Does that make sense? Right? Just want to be clear on that. All right? So speak in terms of a clear outcome. Why should I come to your restaurant? Man, we got the best soul food in town, better than grandma. Right? Why should I come and buy from your boutique? Why should I come to your barbershop? Why should I let you be my whatever service-based business you provide, right? So 
Speak in terms of what's the clear outcome that the customer desires that they'll get working with you. Give them a core promise so that way they know they should choose you over anybody else that could possibly do what you do, whether it's at a cheaper price, higher price or whatever. Right. And then if you're doing a higher ticket item, then you need to include a guarantee, in my opinion. Right. I'm giving you detail sauce that people will charge you five and six figures, right, to tell you just, just out of the love, right, just out of the love. All right, where we at with it? Um, Boom, boom, boom. I'm looking at the chat real quick. Boom, 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 boom. No, no, no. So somebody said, give an example from how you search on YouTube. No, no, no. When we're talking about business now, I'm going to go to my industry leaders and I'm going to go to my competitors and I'm going to subscribe to their newsletter if they have an email list, whether it's an email list or a newsletter. But I'm going to go get on their email list, regardless of what it's called. I'm going to turn on post notifications and I'm going to follow them on all of their social media. When they post, I want to see what time they post. What do they post? I want to see, you know, what people are commenting underneath their posts. If they have a Google business page, which they probably should, I want to see what reviews they're getting and why. Right. So when I'm doing research, I want to see the people that are already doing well in this space. What are they doing? Because there's nothing new under the sun. And why should I exhaust all of my resources trying to figure out something that they've already figured out? Right. There's no reason why you should waste a lot of time, money and effort to figure out something that your industry leaders and your competitors have already figured out. The reason why you want to do both is because your industry leaders may have brand equity so they can get away with stuff that maybe your smaller uh, competitors can't. Right. Nike can get away with doing certain things or not doing certain things and still do just fine year after year, day after day, month after month. But let's say I was in the sneaker reselling business or if I wanted to make my own shoe line and sell you a fresh pair of JTs, right? So, okay, if Nike is like, yo, I don't think nobody's doing it better than them, right? That's the industry leader, but I can't do what Nike does. But I do want to see, okay, what are some good things that they're doing? Are they collecting emails? Are they running sales? Are they doing collaborations? Whatever I can learn from them, I'm going to learn it from them. Now, let's say that my local competition is TJ, right? And TJ has his own brand out or he's reselling shoes as well, right? So he's buying them and flipping them or has his own brand, whatever it may be, right? Okay, I want to see what he's doing as well. So I want to get on his email list, right? I want to see what he's doing well. And I want to see where, where they lacking because all the stuff that they're doing well, I want to implement that in my business and the areas that they're lacking. I want to fill that gap. And now that's my differentiating factor, right? That's my unique position that I could come into in the market, right? Other people not doing this. So I'm going to come and do this because I see the, the big guys, they don't have the time to do it because on their scale, it's low ROI, right? The people around my level, they don't want to do it because even though it's a great ROI, they don't want to do the work to get it up and running and maintain it. Okay, boom, I need to come in right there. All right, so so when I'm researching, um, Mike, you in there? I don't know if my boy Mike is in the other room or not. He might still be out. I was going to have him bring me up. Uh, we ain't going to worry about it. Um, but I was going to show you guys an example of it. But um, I've done this with my board game, card game business, and et cetera, right? So pretty much any business, um, simple way to do it. And what I've done as well, I'll go buy something from them. So I'll buy something from the industry leaders. I'll buy something from uh, the competition because I want to see your entire process. So I'm going to see what's on your website. I'm going to see what's uh, in your emails. I'm going to see when you send out emails. I'm going to see what's on your social media. I'm going to buy something from you. I'm going to see what's your customer experience like, right? Now, as I grew as a bigger entrepreneur, 
Um, I now, just being honest with you, I now pay people on my team or freelancers to do it for me. But when I was smaller and I didn't have the money to do all of this, best believe I was the one doing it. Right. By the grace of God. Now, I still do it, but I don't do it personally. So I'll pay either my VA or if my VA is tied up doing something that I think is more important, I'll pay independent freelancers and they'll a hey, boom, go do this for me right here. Right. And there's tools out there that allow you to do that uh, as well. But we're going to do market research. I, I jokingly call it this. This is how you get a Harvard level education in your industry. Right. I look at it as getting a Harvard level education in my industry, whatever your industry is. I'm seeing what people are doing in real time to make money in that industry, whether it's my competition or it's my industry leaders. All right. Um, boom, boom, boom. Let me see. What, okay. So that touched on the question where somebody was talking about using YouTube. All right. So that's how I do it. How do you source or get the customers that you need to sell or provide your services to? My favorite way is paying influencers in that niche that already have an audience of my potential buyers. So a lot of you guys know before I was even on social media, um, I worked with Kid and Play, Big Daddy Kane, Salt and Pepper, Boys the Men. Uh, man. It's some more, but it's slipping my mind. I'm getting brain freeze, y'all. But I work with a lot of like legendary 90s uh, hip-hop and R&B artists um, as part of the I Love the 90s tour and on some other independent ventures as well, right? So before anybody even knew JT existed, and right now we're also managing, I think it's like eight or nine Instagram accounts as well. Um, so before I was out there as like, hey, I'm the face of this thing, uh, I pay people that already had done the hard part. They've already spent the years of uh, building up an audience of people that like, know, and trust them. So one second, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So right now we got nine Instagram pages and we got four uh, YouTube channels, right? Most of which, and we're still tweaking them. Not all of them are where I envision them to be, um, but most of them are uh, ones that run with very little uh, effort by me, right, or even any affiliation to me. But my favorite way to market, now this does cost money. Or possibly you can give them an affiliate deal, um, but it depends on who you're working with. They might want money up front and an affiliate deal. It just depends on your industry. But I've gotten the greatest ROI off of using influencers, right? I got the greatest ROI off of using influencers, all right? Um, and this is just finding men and women on social media with the following that's greater than 20,000, less than a hundred thousand and DMing them or emailing them. If they provide an email on their page, uh, asking them, Hey, uh, how much do they charge or do they charge to do promo? If so, what promotions do they offer? And at what price point? Right. Um, now, of course, outside of that, people have had a lot of success with paid ads. People have had a lot of success with uh, like organic posts on social media. But I'm biased. And you guys know I don't mind sharing my biases with you. That's my bias. Best way that I've made money uh, marketing. Right. So, yes, you can do other things. But that's that's my best way so far. If, if something better comes along for me, I'll tell you. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Tucks in Arizona in the building. All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, what should I pay attention to when writing my value proposition? How would you go about making sure a value proposition provides an undeniable solution, right? So so to, to make it easy on ourselves, let's understand that we're not doing anything inside of a vacuum, right? What I mean by that is that we don't even have to know what it is that we want to offer the market all we have to do is listen to what the market tells us. So let's say that I go to your Google uh, business review page 
And I see that you got a lot of good reviews, but when I sort it by your least favorable reviews, um, I'm consistently seeing that the only bad thing they're saying about you is uh, when you come do the service, you're late. Well, okay. Um, if you're my competitor, then I know that on my website, in my marketing, on my social media, in my emails, we're going to really emphasize that we're prompt. We're going to be early or on time, but we're never going to be late. And if we're late, we're going to give you this incentive, this discount, right? Um, so I, when it, when anytime I'm trying to think of what product I'm going to sell, and I'm so glad you asked that question, right? Marketing begins before the product exists. Marketing begins before the product exists. I have this conversation with authors all the time and they'll say, hey, JT, how you making so much money off your books? I wrote a book. Don't nobody buy my book. And I was like, man, marketing begins before you even create the product, service or information. Right. So like I told you guys, I'm on the home stretch of finalizing our board game and card game. But I've been talking about my board game and card game now for the better part of, of this year. Right. So there's already been several people that have reached out to me and they said, hey, I'm ready to pre order now because I want to make sure that I get a copy of that board game or card game. There's already been people that reached out to me and said, hey, look, uh, I always had an idea about making a board game or card game, but I didn't know that it could actually be profitable. Um, you know, how much would you charge me to help me figure out how to make my own board game or card game? Right. Because you guys know we do our research first and then our motto is if we can't pre-sell it, we can't sell it. I don't think that people are going to magically change their mind about wanting or not wanting something just because it exists. All right. Those are, that's just one of my crazy beliefs. That's just crazy enough to work for me and for you. All right. Um, boom, boom, boom. So, yeah, what I pay attention to is what's the negatives that's being said about my industry leaders and my competitors. Um, and, when, and when I say competitors, I also too want you all to know, I don't, I don't mean competitors like it's me versus them. When I say competitors, it's other men and women, other businesses that are serving the same or very similar market with the same or a very similar solution. That's all I, that's all I mean. I don't look at them like they the ops and, and my goal is to kill the competition. I actually believe that competition is great in business because it's going to force me as a business to not get lazy and continue to innovate and do great business. It's also going to be great for the end consumer as well, because without there being a monopoly, right, you're going to get the best product, service or information or whatever it is that you're buying, because as long as there's competition, hey, if this person start lacking, that's when I'm going to slide in. When I start lacking, they're going to slide in, right? So when you think of competition, I want to encourage you to not think of competition like they're the, they're the ops that must be destroyed, right? They're not the opposition that you got to destroy. This is just other men and women that serve a similar market in a similar way as you, right? Boom, boom, boom. Let me see where we left off. Bobby Larson said, JT, I'm making 17K a day. Thanks to you, brother. Hey, appreciate that. What, what are you doing, Bobby Larson? Right? And, I, and I, I appreciate that. I give all credit to God, though. So whatever you're doing, if you're pulling in 17K a day, you did the work. God gave the increase. So I'm just glad I could have, uh, if, if I even had any positive impact on it, um, I'm just glad that God used me. But, yeah, you did the work. God gave the increase. So just keep doing your thing. All right? Um, boom, boom, boom. Uh, um, boom, 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 boom. Somebody say you're a generous man. Not everyone will make it to a hundred K. Uh, I wouldn't set myself up for that many refunds. Right. So, so again, for clarity, um, it's not a, you take the program, you don't make a hundred K, you get your money back. It's a, you take the program and you do what the program says. Right. So, so here's the thing about making money, right? It's not a, it's not a magic trick. It's not a, a hope, right? So, um, like, just like anything in life, well, not anything in life, but just like many things in life, there are certain things that are just universal truths, 
right? So if if you eat less and move more, you lose weight, right? Assuming you're a normal person with no health conditions that prevent you to do that, right? And, and I think that making money, I know that making money is the same way. So you don't lose weight by going to the gym and sitting down and watching other people work out, right? And just say, well, I pay my membership every month, so I don't know why my stomach not getting flatter and my arms not getting more toned, right? You actually got to go participate as well. So um, definitely, they, they have to do the work, right? So so if, if they join the program and don't do the work, I, I'll be the first one to tell them nothing's going to happen. It's not a magic trick. $100,000 a year, right? So I already know that following this blueprint uh, is going to make them way more money than than $100,000, right? Like I said, and the prices will go up on the program. Um, like I said, we're doing it at a, at a low price point uh, just to get a lot of quick wins in. That's another hack you guys can steal, right? So I didn't want to do it so cheap that we attract people that are time wasters or tire kickers. Um, not saying that a time waster or a tire kicker don't got $1,000 because maybe they do. But typically, uh, when you have these higher end prices, um, the people that are not serious about really wanting that thing aren't going to spend that much money, right? Um, and arguably, a thousand dollars is not even a high ticket, right? Thousand dollars is not even a high ticket. Uh, but definitely, somebody that's just curious about it, right? It wouldn't make sense. They'll spend a thousand dollars. They wouldn't do what they were supposed to do, and then they wouldn't get their money back. It doesn't even make sense. Uh, for that, for that man or woman to do that, right? So for sure, yep, is it, they got to do the work, right? And the the dope thing about business is that, like, you can see somebody put the work in, right? You know if somebody is marketing because you see the marketing. You know if somebody has a website because you can go to their website, right? You know if somebody is is implementing the systems in their business. If you say, hey, listen, where are your systems at? And they're like, we ain't got no system. What's a system, right? Hey, how are you building desire? How are you ensuring that your items are going to sell out or sell at a high rate before you make them and then twist your fingers like this and say, I hope I sell out, right? So if if, if you're doing everything right, <coughs> you're going to get the outcome, right? It's, it's like, you guys know I'm a country boy. If we mix Kool-Aid powder, water, and sugar, Right. We, there's no way that we can get Dr. Pepper. Right. So if I'm mixing Kool-Aid powder, water and sugar, I'm going to get Kool-Aid. All right. That's all I can get if that's all that's in there. It's no way I can get Dr. Pepper. Right. And it's no way that I can't that I that I end up with nothing. Right. It, assuming there's no holes in the picture. Right. But if, if there's no holes in the picture, uh, there's no way that I end up with nothing. All right. So I'm going to end up with something. And the only thing I can end up with is Kool-Aid. And the same thing is true when you learn business. When you learn these are the ingredients. Here's what you need to do consistently. And the only thing you can get is this. Right. Um, and it makes it way easier. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Let me see where we left that. All, of it. All right. Uh, charging too high for a program that will slowly decline. I don't really get the question, right? So, so high ticket programs will never decline, right? I, well, this is what I want you to understand is that let's be clear. So it is appearing to be a new thing in our community with these high ticket programs. I can tell you that there are organizations that have been charging high ticket annual memberships to be a part of them before you and I were born. Unless somebody here by chance is over the age of 100 years old, right? So high ticket programs have always been around our whole life at least, right? And there have always been people that buy it. Now, it may be new to you. It may be new to me. It may be new to us, right? Um, so it may be a season where, okay, this group of people are into it and then they're out of it like it's a fad. But at its highest level, high ticket programs isn't a fad. 
it might be a fad in this particular community, but overall it's not a fad. So um, one particular organization that, um, you know, that I had been graciously invited to, right? Um, annual membership starts at around 50K a year. And this is some of the top business leaders. So uh, the, the people that sit at the head of some of the most influential businesses, right? Now, of course, there's levels to it. So I'm not saying that you just pay 50K and then you get to go jump on the yacht with Jeff Bezos, right? So that's why I say the the it starts at 50K a year, but it puts you in proximity with high-level individuals, right? There's also other organizations that were gracious enough to invite me in. And the prerequisite for the invitation is you already have to be making seven figures a year, right? So if you're saying in the sense of high ticket programs targeting people that can't afford them is going to be a fad and you know they finance it, then for sure, right? And, and the sooner the better with that. In my personal opinion, not dissing nobody. The sooner the better with that. I believe that anything that's predatory, anything that's not truly adding value to somebody, the quicker the market flushes that out, the better for everybody, right? But the whole the whole goal of a premium value, also called a high ticket program, is not to convince the broke person, nothing wrong with being broke, I was broke before, but it's not designed to convince the broke person to finance money they don't have to, you know, take advantage of them and then they may or may not get a result, right? What that price point does is that it allows a safe place for a higher echelon people to network in a genuine way. That's what some of these organizations are, right? Um, and it's also for others it's a way to get the result they want faster, right? Again, I'm not trying to sell you on uh, you have to buy my high ticket program or anything like that. I'm just saying that I recommend you should have one in your business, all right? My highest tier offer right now is $60,000 a year, right? It starts there and it goes up. And the businesses that, that give me that and more make seven plus figures off of that investment. All right. The businesses are already making six figures plus before they are even qualified to work with me. Right. I don't even work with any businesses at that level if they're not already making a quarter million dollars a year. Right. So if, if you're, you know, on the defense thinking JT is just trying to sell you something and, and leave you high and dry. If you're not already making a quarter million dollars a year, then you don't even qualify to work with me at the highest level. Not a bad thing, but I just want you to know that that's not my intent at all, right? Um, let me see where we left off with it, though. Um, boom, boom, boom. All right, let me see. I'm just seeing if there's any questions real quick. Somebody says, I have a product idea. I'm sure, where did it jump up to? I'm sure we'll sell out and do numbers, but no investor, right? Yep. Um, To be honest with you, savvy investors will want to see that you've already pre-sold it uh, or you have collateral in excess of what you're asking for. I think for most people, they uh, pre-selling it is a is a more viable way. So like, let's say, for example, you wanted $50,000 to invest in whatever your thing was and you owned your house outright and it was worth $200,000. And you came and said, hey, listen, uh, I am believing in myself so much that if you give me $50,000 in cash, I will give you my $200,000 house as collateral because I already know I'm going to take this $50,000 and turn it into a million dollars, right? 
Um, because believe it or not, the number one thing, and this is if you're dealing with angel investors for sure, and lots of times venture capitalists as well. So angel investors are people that are giving you their money. Venture capitalists are people that are giving you money that they pool together. So if like me and 25 of my friends came together and said, this is our pot of money collectively, we would be a venture fund. We would be venture capitalists. If I say, okay, I'm going to use JT's money personally, I'm an angel investor, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, right? So if that was the case, uh, whether they're venture capital or angel investors that you're going after, I want you to know that they're more interested in how they're not going to lose money is usually their top priority. Um, very high net worth people will allocate maybe half a percent or 1% of their net worth to investing in items like that, but they still would be most interested in seeing what's, what's your plan, right? What's your, what's your viable contingency plan, all right, uh, to ensure that I don't lose my money. Um, in the event that you don't have adequate collateral and excess value of what you're asking for, which a lot of people don't because they don't know that that was a prerequisite, um, can you go create an MVP, which is not a most valuable player, but a minimal viable product or so a small version of what it is that you want to create, go sell that in the marketplace and then bring that as data to say, hey, I already know people want this thing because look at how much money I made off of this thing already, right? So, hey, if, if I had 50000 I could have made a million, but I just, you know, made the minimal viable product. I took my MVP to market, and the MVP I, I made with 1500 and it went and it brought back $12,000, right, or whatever it brings back. And then they'll make a decision based off of that as well. So, yep. So anytime as somebody that has invested in several businesses, um, I have lost money, made money, right? And, and been uh, broke even, <laughs> if you will, as an investor, just letting you know um, that's, that's, that's just how an investor is thinking, right? Pretty much all the investors that I know that are savvy investors. All right. Um, Next point that I have here, host an in-person or a virtual event. I will tell you that the easiest way to make big money in a short amount of time is via events. If it's a restaurant, do a grand opening, right? If it's a t-shirt brand, do some sort of virtual event if you don't have a physical storefront, right? If it's a coaching program, bring them into a free mastermind webinar or whatever it is first, right? Events is where it's at. Events allow the men and women that are potential buyers of your product, service, or information the opportunity to connect with you so that way they can decide, hey, do we want to spend our money with you, JT? Do we want to spend our money with you, whoever you are watching this? Right. I am convinced if you were to do more events all right, and you don't got to have a huge uh, budget and say you're going to rent out clubs and do major events, you can do Zoom events. You can make flyers in Canva or you yourself uh, can go to Fiverr.com and pay somebody to make you a professional looking flyer and you can promote that flyer and drive traffic into that Zoom room and you can actually do your own virtual event. And at your virtual event, you can really make a lot of money, right? I see so many people having five, six, and now even seven figure days off of virtual events. It could be a one day event. It could be a five day, a seven day shoe. I know some people, I don't know how they do it, but they did a 30 day event, virtual event one time. Right. So believe it or not, host an event. Right. Make a big deal about it. If you have the audacity to be a business owner, why aren't you willing to make a big deal about your product, your service, your information, the value that you bring into the marketplace? Right. So make a big deal about it 
and get people on board so that way they say, you know what, hey, I I believe in JT, right? If he's willing to do all of this for it, it, it might actually be the real deal, right? Because they're putting on an event. And then how you do the event depends on your budget. Uh, there's some tried and true ways uh, that, that doing an event will definitely take you to five, six figure uh, days as well, right? Uh, boom, boom, boom. So host an in-person or a virtual event. Matter of fact, I'm going to let you guys know a secret. Only the people that watch the video this long, all right? Because I, I know a couple of people might have already clicked off by now. We are now creating our first software product as a business. And this software product, because I have seen from firsthand experience and observed many other people, have five and six figure and seven figure days off of in-person and live events, we're now creating a software that makes it even easier for them to do those events, right? More to come later on. So we're still working on some details, but I say that to say that that's how much I believe in events. That's how much I know events work, right? Are you willing to make a big deal about your product, about your service, about your information? Right? Boom, boom, boom. See some people asking about the five-day program? Click that link down in the description below. You can enroll. Like I said, the five-day program, self-paced. It's going to teach you everything you need to know to make 100K a year. If, you're, if you have a business that's not already doing 100K, Every single year in business, that program is designed for you, right? Hey, boom, you're already doing something, but whatever you're not doing, that program is going to get you right and show you here's the tried and true things you can do to make 100 a year um, in, in your business. You're going to have direct access to me. So after you go through the program and you implement in the steps, if you get stuck or have a question, you'll reach out to me directly and I'll tell you what I would do in that situation. Um, and if you do everything that program says, and in 12 months or less, you don't make 100K or more, I'll give you your money back. Right? Um, boom, boom, boom. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right. Let me see where we at. See some networking going on. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to jump over the networking just for the sake of time. But definitely network. Take advantage of the live chat. Take advantage of the comment section below. All right. Okay. Somebody says, how long do I need to do marketing before I create or sell my products for about one month, two months, or more? Right. So I definitely would say... um. I would, I would test it out because it depends on your market, right? So if you can market for a week and then sell it, and I'm assuming you're talking about pre-sales, right? So to me, I, I say this is validated or one of my many milestones to say that this is validated is when whatever the cost that it would take to make this thing is covered in pre-sales that's when i began making it all right so whatever it would cost you to do that thing i would pre-sell it like let's say just for easy math let's say that i spend 500 dollars for every book that i create that's me having a professional book cover made by a graphic designer that's me having a professional proofreader and editor go through and fix all the words that I misspell because I got a South Carolina education, fix my rent on sentences, do this, do that, and do everything that makes my book uh, be a professional book before you guys uh, get to see it, right? Okay, boom. What if I put the book for sale for 20 bucks just for easy math, and whenever I reach $500 in pre-sales, okay, boom, right? Let's go ahead and knock this out. All right. Um, I do. I call it an outline. Different people call it different things. But I do create an outline up front, basically, so I know, hey, if I do hit my pre-sale goals, 
here's the steps to for me to uh, fulfill making this thing as fast as possible, if that makes sense, right? So it's not like, okay, now I made $500. Now let me figure out how in the world to even do this, right? Some people do it that way. I don't do it that way. So I already know, okay, boom, this this is who I'm going to use for this. This is who I'm going to use for that. This for that. This for that. This for that. Boom. Okay, we hit the numbers. Let's execute on it. Boom, boom, boom. Right? So I was split tested uh, to answer your question. I was split tested. All right? To see what your market responds back to. All right? Now, in the world of Amazon, you can't you can't pre-sell or most people, unless you are like Elon Musk with the Cybertruck, you can't pre-sell items for years and years and years and expect people to not get upset with you, right? Uh, hey, maybe one day we'll all get the Elon Musk level and you can do like how he did with the cyber trucks. So within reason, of course, you guys are smart. Um, but definitely my motto is if I can't pre-sell it, I can't sell it. I don't think people are going to magically want my stuff after it exists if they didn't want it before it exists, right? So think about something that you don't eat, right? If somebody asks you, hey, do you eat barbecue pigeon feet? And you say, no, man, I don't eat barbecue pigeon feet. Okay, cool. Your answer was no. If they come to you uh, a couple of hours later with a pot and say, hey, I bought you a pot of this barbecue pigeon feet, do you eat it then? No, you said you didn't want it before they had it. And now that they have it and you can smell it, it doesn't magically make you say, oh man, give me one of them barbecue pigeon feet, right? Same thing is true in your business as well, all right? Same thing is true in your business as well. So stop trying to make people buy and eat your barbecue pigeon feet that never said they wanted it to begin with, all right? Um, boom, 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 boom. Uh, can I create a car game using chat GBT? Uh, I would imagine so. Yes. Uh, this is my thing though. So a as far as like, can you, uh, boom, 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 one second. So can you actually make it? Yes. I think I don't think there's too much of anything you can't create with uh artificial intelligence and chat GBT and other tools like that. But my thing is before I even spend the time to use AI tools or freelancers or whatever to get the stuff made, always, always, always start with asking yourself this who needs it? Who's gonna buy it? Right? Who's going to buy it? If you don't know who's going to buy it before the AI creates it, you're going to be in the same bucket. You're going to have a fantastic AI created business with zero customers. And I don't want you to be in that boat. So, yes, I believe that AI can create a card game. I believe AI can create a whole lot of other assets for you. But before I just say I'm going to go to AI and make it, I'm going to say who in the world is going to buy it if it existed. If that makes sense. All right. Um, uh, boom, boom, boom. Do you do marketing for people? Yes. My 60K and up clients. Yes. Um, uh, boom, boom, boom. Let me see. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so people asking about the program. So the program link down description below is for people that have already started their business, but your business is not making 100K or more per year, right? Yep, yep. So that's what it's for. Um, for clarity, hey, I love everybody here. I love everybody subscribed to this channel. But just to be honest with you, I'm a B2B entrepreneur primarily. We got a little bit of B2C stuff here and there, uh, but I am over 90%. I'm a B2B entrepreneur, meaning that I'm a business owner who serves primarily businesses. So we help businesses in marketing and other stuff, but mostly marketing, right? So I'm a business who serves other businesses uh, primarily. So if you don't have a business, I still love you. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, 
We got books and other stuff for you. Or you can just watch all of the free YouTube videos, right? One thing that I want you to know about me is genuinely, I am not one of these people that's going to like be desperate, hard up, give me your money, buy this, buy that, buy this, buy that, right? So uh, this channel, we talk about an array of different businesses and investments, and I give you guys my tangible strategies that are currently working for me in real time, like this topic we're talking about today for you to go execute on. But uh, I, I don't want you all to ever feel like in a pressured environment, if that makes sense. So genuinely, there's people that have watched my free YouTube videos and went on and made a killing, right? They watched the free YouTube videos, went on and made a killing. Um, without ever buying anything from me. At the end of the day, if you win, amen, right? Whether whether I can help you or not, I just want you to win. And um, like I said, maybe in the future, we uh, will do something for startups. Uh, but I told you guys, and I'll briefly reiterate it here and then we'll move on. Uh, here's how I started my business. I live below my means. I ate the same meal every day. I stayed in a place that was super cost uh super cost effective right aka the hood and i saved up fifteen thousand dollars right i quit my job with that fifteen thousand dollars i went all in on business my business went like this it went straight up and then what i didn't know canon eventually hurt me and went straight down i ended up broken homeless on the side of interstate 95 and then i said i'm gonna figure out how to be a successful entrepreneur or i'm gonna die trying right and then my business went back up like that Right now, that may sound like a good story, but I don't want to tell you all to go stay in the hood, live below your means, power save half of your income or more every single month, no matter what. Go all in on business. If you go broke and homeless and got to sleep on the side of Interstate 95, say that you're going to either die on the side of that interstate or become a highly successful entrepreneur. Right. I don't want to tell you that. I think that there is a better way to get to that goal. But if I'm going to be truthful with you, that was my journey, right? So I am, in my opinion, I am better versed, aka more valuable at helping businesses that are already up and running make more money because my story or my process of making you more money is way less painful than getting you up and running. Which is why I told you guys, uh, if and when, which more than likely will be when, we do a startup program, it's going to cost me like 40 grand to start it up because I have to partner with people that are well-versed at helping you start businesses in less painful ways. Now, a lot of my friends are way better at helping people start than me. Right, which is why I bring them on the channel. You guys know them. You guys might have went to one of their challenges or something like that. Right, they're by far. I'll I'll admit it. Right, not a perfect entrepreneur. They are uh very well versed at helping people start way better than I am. Right, my niche, my zone of genius is getting you to six figures and then getting you from six to seven figures. Right, but getting you from zero to get started. Understand this. I was raised by in a low income environment. All right. And it, it was rough, but that's just how it was, right? Thank God for that experience. I left that environment. I went to the United States Marine Corps. It was rough, but I thank God for that experience. I left that. I went to corporate America. It was rough. I thank God for that experience. I became an entrepreneur, went broke and homeless, slept on the side of the road. So my journey. Right. Has been a whole lot of suck it up and make it happen anyway. And I do understand that not everybody responds to a, a suck it up and make it happen anyway type of coaching style. So that's why I'm just being honest with you guys. That's my long winded answer. But I'm really good at helping people that are in motion make more motion. But you got to get in motion. All right, you got to get in motion. Um, boom, boom, boom. All right, networking going on. That's cool. Oh, that's dope. 
Somebody's at a pop up event now. All right. Boom, boom. Oh, yep, yep, yep. All right, so so somebody had a service-based business. I'll touch on this quickly, and then we'll hit the last point, and I'll get out the way if there's no more uh, questions after this. So if you have a service-based business, I, mine was an independent courier service. I'm sure yours was something different because there's so many different service-based businesses out there, right? So typically, a lot of us start service-based businesses because they have relatively low overhead to start versus product size businesses. But every business needs to eventually create products because you need products to make an infinite return. So if I had a service-based business right now and I had a problem finding viable workers, I would first do an internal audit and say, okay, is it the pay? Right. Because maybe at the price point that I could afford to pay them now, I can't attract the quality of people that I want to work. So to get the quality and caliber of people that I want to work, I may have to pay them more money. So then I have to say, OK, how can I serve in a greater capacity or more people so that way I have the resources to hire a greater clientele of people? If that wasn't an option for whatever reason, I would then look at selling leads. So if I didn't have the capacity to fulfill all of the work, but I was really good at marketing and getting people that needed my independent courier service or whatever service based business you had. Right. I would sell those leads to other businesses that did have the capacity or that weren't burnt out that could fulfill that. Right. Or like we said earlier, maybe I'll teach other people how to do it. And I'll make money off of the education. Maybe I'll create a done for you offer and I'll sell that as well. Right. So we need to have products in our business and that prevents us from getting burnt out. That allows us to have an infinite return in business. And that's our goal. Right. That's our goal. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Let me see where we left off. Uh, if you put in all the work and got it to that point, what's the point of investors? Uh, yeah, the investors are to help you go further faster, right? But if you're looking for an investor to get you started, uh, usually unless you have a rapport with them. So it's not a hundred percent of the time. If you have a rapport and a relationship and y'all did whatever to build that, then maybe, but yeah, just to help you get started, usually no. Right. Usually to help you get started. No, unless you have that collateral. So if you have collateral in excess of what you're asking for or if you're already in motion. Yep. Because this is what you have to think about, though. So put yourself in the shoes of the other person. The investor has no shortage of people that would take their money and say, I'm going to go do something to make more money off of your money and then come back and split it with you. So since there is an endless supply of people that would take their money or part of their money and go do a business with it, then that investor has to position themselves in a way that makes sense for them. So they tend to be uh, conservative. So how do I how am I guaranteed not to lose any money? Right. OK, well, you got this collateral and. The collateral doesn't always have to be a house. I just said that uh, the collateral is whatever that person is willing to accept um, for X amount of dollars that you're asking for. Right. But just put yourself in the shoes of the investor. And lots of times, um, yeah, those investors are like people that want to borrow money are a dime a dozen. Right. So uh, they, they're usually going to have um, a prerequisite of some sort, whether it's collateral experience, pre-sales, or even more than that. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. So I do think like, yeah, most businesses don't need investors, right? I think most businesses would like investors, but yeah, yeah, I do agree with you. Most businesses don't need investors. I think because they don't understand how 
investors think. They believe that an investor will just be some rich person that has an extra million dollars and will just give them all a part of that. So that way they can go start a business and say, well, I'm going to take your million and turn your million into a hundred million. Well, on the journey for or for them to become whatever level investor that they are, they've, they've already figured out how to make money, right? So uh, they wouldn't be in that position if they needed, if they needed help making money, right? Um, so they're, they're really big on wealth preservation, all right? Boom, boom, boom. All right, if you don't know what price is to charge in your market because there's not competitors that do the same, then there, then you need to look into a broader market. Maybe you're in a small town, so maybe they're not doing it in that small town, but you can go to Google and type in your services near me, IT services near me, or probably something more niche than that, like a, a particular service that you do, and then you can find a phone number and call and see what surrounding prices are. Um, if you build a brand, so that's one way of doing it. If you build a brand, you can charge essentially anything, right? And that has to be within reason. All right. Cause yes, you could throw whatever price you want on it. That doesn't mean people will buy it. So if you build a reputation, if you build a rapport in the marketplace, then, uh, then yes, right. Then yes, um, it is possible, uh, for you to, to make up your own prices and people will pay it. But if you're new, you don't have a reputation. They don't know if they like you yet. They don't know if they can trust you yet. Anything about you. Then yes, I would just look at a broader market and I would just see what the, what the industry is charging. And that would at least be my baseline. So I, if they charging a hundred bucks for this, 500 for that, whatever, whatever, then, then that's cool. Right. Uh, I recently paid, uh, for a data recovery service, it was 800 bucks. Right. Um, and I'm quite sure they got that number because they called around to other data recovery places and got that number. Right. Um, yeah, just cause I have a little bit of insider knowledge with that company, but definitely I will start off just opening up your search area and just seeing what, what that market will tolerate. Right. At, at least as a baseline, because you might say I want to charge five thousand dollars for everything that I do. But if there is no no viable thing to point at and say this is industry standard, then you're going to have to depend on your brand. And if you don't have a brand, then it's going to be very hard to do. All right. So I don't know where you learn medical commodities from. Somebody asked uh, a medical commodities question. So if, if you learned it through Felix's program, he already connects you with the private buyer. So those prices are already set. So understand that the three ways that a easy business, by my definition, is a business that can make money doing the thing. So maybe in your market, the prices for doing the thing are set by industry standards or whatever your private buyers are willing to buy. And if you try to charge more than that, they'll just say, find somebody else. And you may or may not can do that. But instead of trying to do that, we'll look at what are the other ways you can monetize it. So can you sell somebody the blueprint of what it is that you do to make money? And now there's no selling on that. It just depends on how well you market it. And then uh, on your done for you or your lead generation done with you side of it, uh, so with medical commodities, if you got into medical commodity marketing and said, I'm going to specialize in that, then you can pretty much put whatever ticket you want on those services, right? Whether it's a percentage split, a flat rate or whatever, right? So definitely if you're in an industry that is regulated by whatever means, uh, that's why I say when you're thinking about what business to start, ask yourself, is this an easy business and how we identify easy businesses are businesses that pay us for doing the thing, selling the blueprint for the thing, and a done for you or done with you version of the thing can be sold as well, right? So if I see all three of those as viable ways I can make money, 
uh, 1,000%, I'm going to go in, right? Last point that I have here, sell a result not tied to your time. Sell a result not tied to your time, right? That's going to give you ultimate scalability. Let me recap all five real quick. So here's how you can have a 10K or greater day, right? Identify how, how are you going to make your money? Are you going to make your money doing the thing, selling the blueprint of the thing, or selling the done-for-you version or lead generation uh, version of the thing, right? Those are three different ways. So how are you going to make your money? You have to make up your mind what you're going to do, right? If you're selling a dollar thing and you want to make your money a dollar at a time and have a $10,000 day, it's possible, but that's way harder, right? But if that's what you want to do, you have to make up in your mind, that's what I want to do, so I'm going to have to spend this much money in ad spend, this much money with influencers, this much money doing this, this, and this, right? So you probably won't turn a nice profit, but you can still do it. So how will you make your money? Only you can identify that. I would recommend that you look at uh, either the second or third way that we talked about. So how will you make your money? And then I want you to leverage scarcity and our savings. That's the second one. I want you to speak in terms of a clear outcome and a core promise. And if it's a high ticket item, include a guarantee of some sort. Doesn't even always have to be a money back guarantee, but that's most common, right? Uh, four is host an event. If you don't have the money to do an in-person event, that's fine. You Zoom, do a virtual event. Sell your product, sell your service, sell your information at an event. Make it a big deal. It could be a one day, three day, five day, seven day, 10 day, you make, you name it, event, right? Big money, all the big money that I've seen, here's a nugget. All of the big money that I've seen, people were selling at events. So sell at an event, right? Instead of us trying to figure out an alternative way to do it, we could just see what's already working. Sell your stuff at an event. And if you can't go to somebody else's event and sell it, make a flyer and do your own event, right? Do your own event, all right? Um, and sell a result not tied to your time, all right? So I've been picking at myself this whole live stream, and I'll, and I'll keep it going for, for the sake of illustration. So my five-day program is a self-paced program. So when you join, you go through the five-day program first. Then you start implementing what you learn in the five-day program. It, hopefully, you start implementing it before the five days is up. But then you start implementing the program. And then I am a resource after you're already doing what the program told you to do to help you get over hurdles. I'm not an alternative to the five-day program, right? So the result that you're going to get, there's people that's already – in the program and reporting, hey man, like I I never even knew this. I did this and boom, I made five hundred dollars a day, and I ain't had a five hundred dollar day in years, right? So how can you sell a result not tied to your time? That's how it's infinitely scalable. Anything can be automated through people, software, or both, right? Now these people could come in the form of freelancers employees, VAs, business partners, you name it, right? So there's no excuse, but you can 1,000% do this, right? To all of the business owners that are here, all right, that have yet to make $100,000 in a year, right? Matter of fact, if you guys need a bonus, I'm going to throw in a bonus, all right? Just as a thank you for staying here this long. Here is how... My mentor, and I don't think I have her permission to give all of her details out, so I won't say her name or the details, but I will tell you what she did. Like I said, I saw her make, it was either $196,000 or $198,000 in a day, right? And when asked, how did you know to do it this way, right? Because that was a lot. I don't know about you, that's a lot for me. Right. I think firsthand, that's the most money I probably ever knowingly seen somebody make. Maybe people around me were doing it and I didn't really know to what degree, uh, because oftentimes I don't. But that was the first person that I knowingly saw single handedly do one hundred and ninety six or one hundred and ninety eight thousand, basically two hundred grand in a single day. And when asked, 
how did you know to even do this the way that you do it, right? And she charged over $25,000 to break it down. That's why I say out of respect to her, I'm not going to get into the details. Uh, not gatekeeping, but at the same time, I just think it's ethical not to get into it. But what I, what I can share that I'm sure she wouldn't mind is she was like, I went and I bought somebody else's program that was similar to mine, right? So she was like, hey, before I even made this program, and had the audacity to charge this much for it. I went and paid somebody that was already good at doing this, delivering this result with, with a similar core promise and a, and a similar guarantee. I went in and gave them X amount of thousands of dollars, right? She spent well over half a million dollars. Not saying you got to spend that much money. So don't get caught up on the, the numbers. She was like, I spent well over half a million dollars. I gave this person two fifty. I gave this person two fifty. I gave that person fifteen, and I did it because, yeah, from afar, from the outside looking in, I could kind of say, oh, I think this is what you're doing, but when I, but when I give you that money, you got to show me the whole thing, right? So, as a bonus tip, if you are struggling with creating an offer that you think is worthy of making $10,000 or more per day, right? I recommend you joining somebody's offer that's already performing at $10,000 or better per day, right? So that's a little bonus. Not everybody can do that. I already know it. If you can't do it, don't do it. This is not trying to convince you to do something you can't do. For those of you all, because my phone has been buzzing, uh, for those of you all that are in the program, that joined the program while we were live here, the five-day program to help you make 100K, welcome. I'm going to end this live, and I'm personally going to send you my contact information in your email. Whatever email you just used to do your order, I'm, I don't see it yet, but I'm going to respond to that email with my direct contact and um and go through the program, start executing. If you need help, use that to reach out directly to me. When you reach out through that, it's not it's not my assistant, it's not Dallas, it's not nobody, it's me, right? I'm gonna be on the other side of it. Um, also, last housekeeping tip: if if you hit me up at 1:22 a.m., right, and this person knows who they are, but respectfully, if I don't hit you back at 1:22 a.m. I'm probably sleep, right? Nine times out of 10, I'm probably sleep. So I will respond, but if it's outside of normal business hours, just give me give me a little time, right? I, I be sleeping and doing everything else normal humans do too. So I'm gonna hit you right back. All right, till next time, so I'm hustling, stay hustling. JT Automations, I'm gone.